Hallelujah, glory be to God in the heavens and in the highest. We want to thank God for another time in God's presence as we look into the word of God this Saturday morning, the 29th day of the month of April. God has been so good to us. We serve a mighty, mighty, awesome God. We give him praise for the gift of life. We thank him for all that he is doing in our lives. Glory to God. We give him praise for his mercy. Bible says God who is rich in mercy. We thank God for his grace. We thank God for his grace. Bible says the grace that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. We give God praise this morning. We give him praise. Bible says his mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Let us pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for such an awesome time. What a privilege to come before your presence. What a privilege to be accepted as sons and daughters. Lord, we ask, oh God, that as we encounter your word afresh this morning, Lord, that you will speak to our hearts. We ask that you will cause a revelation of your word to come upon us, that, Lord, consequent upon this encounter, we will never be the same again. Thank you, mighty God, for in Jesus' precious name we'll pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This morning I'll be sharing with us on the topic I titled Manifestations of the Sons of God. Manifestation of the Sons of God. And our test will be taken from the book of Romans, chapter number 8. Romans, chapter 8. I'm going to read from verse 14. Fairly, is a fairly long read. Romans, chapter 8, verse 14. As we go on, the Bible says, I'm reading from the Old King James. The Bible says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then hears, hears of God, and join hears with Christ. If be so that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Verse 20. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. Hallelujah. The Bible says in verse 19 that for the earnest expectation of the creature awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. For the expectation of the whole creature awaits the manifestation, the rising up of the sons of God. And before we delve into the real manifestation, I want to start by you know, dwelling on who are the sons of God? Who are the sons of God? Hallelujah. This is the most important thing as it changes the whole equation. Understanding sons in our relationship with God is vital because it changes everything. I want you to know that it was Jesus himself, the son of God, who introduced God to us as a father who made us and opened the door for us as sons of God. In the Old Testament, people served God as slaves and 
and servants and, 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 and ministers, but it was in the New Testament. The New Testament believers are the sons of God. Before now, nobody, nobody was qualified to become sons of God. And I also want to quickly let you know that it's only in Christianity that we have sons. Look at it, every other religion talk about being servants and slaves of God. But in Christianity, we have this awesome privilege to be called the sons of God. So we want to establish from scripture our sonship, hallelujah. I want to establish from the pages of the word of God how we became the sons of God. I want you to know, child of God, you and I have become sons of God. Whether you are a male, whether you are a female, Bible categorizes all of us as sons. Our first scripture this morning will be taken from John chapter 1, verse 12. The first scripture to establish our sonship. Our sonship is taken from John chapter 1, verse 12. I want you to follow me closely as we navigate through the pages of the word of God this morning. John chapter 1, let me read from verse 11 to verse 12. The Bible says, talking about Jesus, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Look at verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Hallelujah. Look at these three verses of this scripture. The Bible says Jesus came to his own who were serving God on the basis of slavery and, and servanthood. But the Bible says he came to his own and they received him none. But look at verse 12. But as many are like that, as many, as many across the globe, as many, no matter their background, no matter their region, no matter their continent, but as many as received Jesus, as many that have accepted Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, the Bible says God gave them power. Glory to God. God gave them power. The power that means the right of privilege. God has given you and I power to become the sons of God. Although God is the creator of everybody, but he's not the father of everybody. The Bible tells us that Jesus categorized some people as the children of the devil because the Bible says that you have your father, the devil. So God is the creator of everybody, but he's not the father of everybody because it remains as many that received him he gave power to become the sons of God. Have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Have you accepted him? Have you received him? You have become, you have been given the power, the right of sonship. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. In Galatians chapter 4, I read from the book of Galatians chapter 4. We're establishing our sonship. And when we understand our sonship, it changes our relationship with God. It changes how we relate with God in, hallelujah, glory to God. In, in, in Galatians chapter 4, I'll read from verse 6. Galatians chapter 4 from verse 6, the Bible says, And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Look at verse 7. Wherefore, you are no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then and heir of God through Christ. Be therefore, you are no more a servant. I want you to know, beloved, we are not servants. We are not slaves. We are sons of God. Hallelujah. This is glorious. We relate with God on the basis of our sonship. 
Our covenant relationship with God is that of a father and a son. That is the basis of our relationship. Bible says we are therefore no longer servants. We are no more servant, but a son. And if a son, then we are heirs of God through Christ. Hallelujah. Awesome scripture. I want you to know that because you have come to Christ, you have come to God through Christ, you've been given the right, the privilege, the power to become the sons of God. Hallelujah. So by you with me back to Romans chapter 8. We want to establish our sonship here. Look at what the Bible says here. It says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. I like verse 15. It says, for we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Abba is the Aramic word for father. So that please means is we cry, my father, my father. When we come to God in the place of prayer, we come to him as my father, my father. This is what Jesus was teaching us in Matthew chapter 6. He said, when you pray, pray like this, our father who art in heaven, hallelujah. Is the almighty God, yes. Is the El Shaddai, yes. Is the all-powerful God, yes. Is the all-knowing God, but much more than this is my father, hallelujah. Oh, he's my father. I knock at his door, I say, daddy, hey, glory to God. Nothing surpasses these privileges. Nothing can compare to this. That God is not just a distant God. God is not just a just God. God is not just a creator of the ends of the earth. He is your father. Hallelujah. I want you to say, God is my father. In the name of Jesus, he is my father. I am not just a slave. I'm not a servant. I am the son of God. Hallelujah. First John chapter 3. First John chapter 3. Glory to God. We're moving as we look at the scriptures this morning. Establishing our sonship. I am a son of God. I am a son of God. You are a son of God. First John chapter 3. Hallelujah. The Bible says, let me read from verse 1 of First John chapter 3. The Bible says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called what? The sons of God. Therefore, the world knows us not, because it knew him not. Look at verse 2. It said, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Look at verse 3. And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. Look at what the scripture says. It said, what manner of love, what dimension, what degree of love the Father has bestowed upon us. And that degree of love is expressed in elevating us from being servants, elevating us from being slaves, elevating us as a people without a name, without a heritage, and bringing us to the point of sonship. That is the, one of the greatest manifestations of the Father's love. That a father sees us, though unworthy, dirty in our sin, so uncomely. Un, un, un the Bible says God has called us. God has called us. His sons, hallelujah. His sons. The Bible says now we are. I want you to know that your position of sonship starts the day you gave your life to Christ. We are not going to be sons in heaven. We are not going to be sons when Jesus comes. We are already sons of God. That moment, that moment you give your life to Christ, 
that moment you confess your sin and you say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I want you to know, child of God, from that moment on in the kingdom of heaven, in the record of the kingdom, you have become sons of God. You have become adopted. That's what the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 14 and 15. We have the spirit of adoption. The paperwork has been completed. Your name has been changed. Glory to God. Your name has been changed. The Bible says that he's our father, he's the father of all spirit, and by whom we have been called. Your name has been changed. You've been translated from slavery, from servanthood into sonship. That same moment, that same moment, your life was changed. You are catapulted from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. You become the son of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we need to establish that. That I am the son of God. And listen, the implication of sonship is so, is so awesome that the devil wants to keep believers in perpetual ignorance not understanding that they are sons of God. In fact, when Jesus came and identified himself as the son of God, the Bible says the Jews thought of stoning him. They picked stones and pebbles and they tried stoning him because they saw someone who came on the scene and said, I am not just a slave. I'm not just a servant. I am the son of God. And they query them, the question, are you greater than our father Abraham? What it means is that Abraham did not even identify as a son of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Nowhere in the scripture will you hear that Abraham was even referred to as a son of God. His greatest appellation was he was a friend of God. His greatest appellation was that he was the father of faith, but never in the scripture was he referred to as the son of God. So when Jesus came and said, I am the son of God, the father and I are one, they were, they were, they were shocked, they were enraged, they were angry. How can you call yourself son of God? And that is the perpetual lie that the devil wants to put believers, not making them to understand and appreciate their sonship. Elijah was a mighty prophet. So was Elisha. So was Moses. So was David. Ezekiel. All of these people, great heroes of faith in the Old Testament, they didn't have this privilege that you and I have in the New Testament to be called the sons of God. Hallelujah. I like this verse, John. It says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called the sons of God. I am a son of God. Glory to God. I am a son of God. Glory to God. Once you come to that understanding, once you understand your covenant relationship with God as the Son of God, everything changes. The day a son knows that he's a son, <laughs> the day he comes to understand that I am a son in this house, hey, the day he wakes up and it dawns on him that I am a son, that changes everything. Before now, the, the servants of the house could have maltreated him. Everybody, there might have been a lot of problems relating with his needs and all that his rights and privileges might have, might have been denied him. But the day he wakes up and realizes that I am a son, I am a son, the story of the prodigal son never stops to amaze me. Never stops to amaze me. In Luke chapter 15, the Bible says that 
A man has two sons. A man has two sons. The younger came to the father one day and said, Father, give unto me the portion of inheritance that falls to me as a son. And the father couldn't deny him because he came on his authority in his position as a son. He didn't approach the father that day as a slave or as a servant. He came on the premise of sonship. And the Bible says the father gave him everything. And he took it and left. He could not be stopped. Although the Bible says he wasted his substance in riotous living. <laughs> and he became poor, having to feed with swine. But that day, it dawned on him again. What we need is a revelation of the, our sonship. The first thing towards our manifestation as source of God is the revelation of our sonship. Is the revelation. You could have been serving God for decades. You would have been a good person, a good Christian man, a good Christian woman. But the day it, you realize, the day you have the revelation of your sonship, oh, child of God, everything changes. The Bible says one day, it, the Bible says he came to himself and said, what a mess. How can I be going through this? I have a father somewhere. Even his servants live better than I do. He made up his mind, I will arise and I will go to my father. It doesn't matter his state, his relationship with his father never changed. He said, I will arise and I'll go to my father. I will make amends. I will, I will restore my relationship with my father as his son. And the Bible says, when the father saw him afar off, he ran to hug him. This was a man who understood his sonship. He had a revelation. It dawned on him. May you have a revelation of your sonship this morning. May we all have a, a revelation of our sonship in God this morning. It changes everything. The older brother, though he was a son, actually the first son, the book of the Lost Temple that he should have double portion as the first son. But you know what? He didn't live as a son. And we're going to come to that next week or later on in the broadcast as we look at the implications of being the son of God, the benefit of sonship. We're going to be looking at that. Later on in this program, this is part one of manifestation of the sons of God. The part two, we're going to be looking at the benefit of sonship, the implication of sonship. This other brother, though he was to be given the double portion, being the son, lived as a slave. How do I know that? When the younger son came back and the father threw a party, the son was angry. I said, my father, this is not fair. I have lived with you all this while. I have done everything you wanted me to do. I was even in the field when you did your prodigal son came, who had wasted your substance with prostitutes, with gamblers, with drunkards. You have never given me a goat to even rejoice with my friends. And what God the Father says, hey, son, you have been with me. All I have is yours. May we not live in penury in the midst of plenty, in the name of Jesus. May we not live in rats when we have riches in the kingdom. May we not be in want when we are supposed to be wealthy. May the, our eyes, may the eyes of our understanding be open this morning. May we come to know who we are. We are the sons of God. And the Bible says in verse, verse 2 in 1 John, as I conclude this morning, the Bible says, Behold, now are we the sons of God. It may not have, it has not appeared what we shall be. I may not look like it right now. I may not be the best I am, I should be. 
but you can't take that fact from me that I am a son of God. That's what this place is saying. I may not live in my full privileges as a son of God, but you can't take that from me. The paperwork has been completed. I am adopted. That's what they say. But as sons of God, we grow daily to look more like our father. Hallelujah. We know how our natural parenting is like. You know, and when a child is born, we may not know who he looks like, whether the father or the mom. But as the child grows, we know, ah, this child looks like his father. Look at his nose. Look at his lips. Look at the shape of his head. Glory to God. I want to thank God for my father of blessed memory. When my first daughter was born, the first thing my father did was look at her head. <laughs> Looked at her head. And my father said, no, this is our own. Hey, I can see the resemblance here. This one belongs to the Toby family. Glory to God. You can spot that identity in every, in every family lineage. We know we are from this lineage because we look like our father. That is the same thing. Our responsibility as sons, therefore, is to grow daily, to look more like Christ, to look more like our father. I may not look at completely 100% like God. You may point accusing fingers at me right now, but child of God, Wait for me, wait for me. As I develop, as I grow, I look more like my father. And that is what we should be. It may not have appeared unto us what we shall be, but we know that we shall be like him when we see him face to face. Glory to God. I want you to say today, I am a son of God. I'm not a slave. I'm not a servant. I am a son of God because I've accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. He has given me the right and privileges of a son. And may this revelation govern you throughout today. May this revelation govern you all the days of your life that you will know that you are a son of God. God bless you. Thank you for staying with us. This is the first part of the manifestation of the sons of God. And we will continue as God gives us. We may even continue within the week. Please, I want to, I want to, I want to appeal to you. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for Money Showers and Discipleship Series. There are a lot of messages there. You can go into it and listen to these messages at the spare moment. I guarantee you that you will be blessed because it's the word of God. God bless you. Have a wonderful week and happy new month in advance. God bless you. We love you. Publish to post goodbye. Bye-bye.